actual moonshot is wonderful, inspirational, poetic, beautiful, involved, great technical challenges, genuine heroism. It brought the world together. But think about the Polynesian island on the dugout canoe, deciding one day they were going to go that way. No one had ever been that way before. No one even knew if there was anything that way before. It was amazing. And it changed the world. People can set their minds to magical, seemingly impossible ideas, and then through science and technology, bring them to reality. And that then sets other people on fire, that other things that look impossible might be accomplishable. Galileo is such a hero, you know, in Thinking Big, and what he represents to me is both curiosity and wonder that humanity had, that he had, that pushed him and drove himself to invent and work on the first telescopes that allowed us to see the moon, and here we are. These aviation pioneers were, were figuring it out as they went. No one really knew how to build an airplane, right? No one knew how to fly an airplane. It was amazing and crazy and wonderful, and they wanted to explore. Many years ago, the great British explorer George Mallard, who was to die on Mount Everest, was asked why did he want to climb it. He said because it is there. There's so many challenges in the world, and you can feel daunted by that, you know, and sort of oppressed by that, or you kind of say, how might we think differently about this? Everyone else in the world is working on that next 10%. If you can be the one that delivers that 10 times improvement, you have a chance to really change things. If you want cars to run at 50 miles per gallon, fine, you can retool your car a little bit. But if I tell you it has to run on a gallon of gas for 500 miles, you have to start over. You need a lot of courage in this work and you need a lot of persistence. One of the things that's really critical is not only having the courage to be trying every day or thinking big, even if you don't really 100% believe it's possible, like you might think this might be possible. Have the courage to try. That's how the greatest things have happened. You don't spend your time being bothered that you can't teleport from here to Japan. Because there's a part of you that thinks it's impossible. Moonshot thinking is choosing to be bothered by that. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Humanity's progress has been a series of amazing, audacious things from the very small and personal up to the great, big, and grand. And we are a species of moonshots. And to me, that's like the really amazing poetic inspiration. I think our ambitions are a glass ceiling of what we can accomplish. When you find your passion, you're unstoppable. You make amazing things happen. It's been true through all of history. I believe in the human spirit, and I believe that there are always going to be crazy people who will get out of bed one morning and say, you know what? I think I can build a space element, and we'll just go and do it. But I think that if we become afraid to take these great big risks, we stop inspiring people. We stop achieving things. And the biggest nightmare scenario is that we won't have what it takes to solve the really big challenges. When Kennedy said that we would put a man on the moon, it's about the fact that he said, we don't know how to do this yet, and we're going to do it anyway. And that sense chills up everybody's mind. Because if that happens, what couldn't we do? So, we're living in this, this crazy time. We're literally living in the future, as of earlier this morning. And the crazy thing is, is just how possible all of this stuff is. That video is actually comes from the X group. Uh, which is a secret group with inside Google that has made things like driving cars, that has made Google Glass, that just launched balloons over New Zealand to give uh, internet access. This, this entire group's job is to think about problems that we believe to be an unsolvable and then try and solve them. And we live in a really crazy time. Like, you know, the future is now. Do you remember this? Like, we, we've been dreaming about this stuff for as long as I can remember. I mean, sci-fi has had us in this spot, right? And the problem is, this is reality. In 2020, we will have a flying car. It's already in production. It will be out in 2017, and by 2020, flying cars are a reality. It takes you three hour class to learn how to fly it, right? The self-driving car has been out for a while now. It is statistically safer than a human driver. It is a reality. Just 
Three days ago, I got this from Mercedes-Benz, guarantees that it'll be an add-on feature by 2020. Nissan, not to be outdone, says they'll do it by 2017. What company's gonna do it by 2015? You know, there's this idea of space travel has been around forever. This is a company called SpaceX that realizes that the cost of going to space isn't in the fuel, but in the reusable parts, that during the space shuttle program, the only reusable part was the space shuttle. Everything else was a once-use thing and then thrown away. What if you could build a rocket that landed itself? What if rockets became like airplanes and every two hours you could take people to space? We're three years away from doing it. Right? It's gotten so bad that we have this now, I just picked this up the other day, that NBC is now going to have a reality TV show that you have a chance to win to go to space. What they don't think they're telling the contestants is, is this is already happening and there's a three year waiting list where people have already paid $250,000 to do it. You win this reality TV show and you're on a waiting list over three years long already. Right? Or how about this? We've been told through history that someday we'll be able to talk to our wrist and yet you can today. You can go on right now and buy this for your child. It is waterproof, sandproof, unbreakable. It has a SIM card that you get to program in five emergency numbers to, where kids can text you and call you and it tells the time and sends your message. It also comes with GPS tracking so you always know where your child is. We'll actually be talking on our wrist. And that's not even including everything else that's being built. Or how about this? We've always been told we're going to have X-ray vision, and Google will have it next year. Right? It's out. It will be here. And all of this leads me to this question. Why? Why do we live in the most incredible time in history where science fiction is meeting reality and education isn't changing? That education hasn't changed. And there's a couple things that I think about. I think that there's this problem. We all have amazing ideas. You spent two days at this conference getting amazing ideas, and then that happens. At some point, there's a fear, and what we actually end up with is a lot less than where we started. And that's a problem. How do you overcome that fear? How do we move past that? That's what this conference is about, is getting to a point where you try it anyway. The other problem we have is this one, that it's very easy to go along a line, and then all of a sudden there's a big frickin' wall. <laughs> and that big frickin' wall can be a lot of different things. I think for many of it, it's this, Tawadi, right? That's the way we've always done it. At some point, you run into a row, well, the curriculum will change. I don't have enough time, there's too much stuff I have to teach. My partner won't do it with me. We make more excuses for this wall instead of trying to get around it. How do you get around it? This conference is about getting around that wall. And what does that mean? How do you do that? How do you take the challenge of what this conference is and do something different on Monday? What are you going to do on Monday? Because if you do not change what you do on Monday in the classroom, this conference has failed you. This conference is about doing something different. And if you have not changed your practice or things do not change in your school, this conference failed. We failed you. That's what real professional development's about. So I ask you, what's your moonshot? What are you going to do when you go back on Monday? Turn and talk right now to the person next to you. What's your moonshot?
here, we go back into a social event where I want this to be the conversation. I will be coming around talking to you and I will be asking you this question. What is your moonshot? And know that you have the support of people at this conference, right? We are a community. You have other people that you can lean on. You have a personal learning network. You have Twitter. We're all in this together. What's your moonshot? How are you going to change? And one more thing. What's our moonshot? This conference has always been built on doing something different. This conference started because a group of people in Shanghai were bothered by conferences. We're bothered that we sit here and say you shouldn't stand and lecture to kids, and then we invite in keynotes that you sit there for an hour and get lectured to. We, we chose to be bothered by this. And that's what started this conference. That's why this conference is unique. That's why this conference has been running for seven years and no other conference around the world has ever tried to replicate it. Because it's different. Because it's not the way we've always done things and because every year we continue to change it and we continue to fail and we continue to move forward. Next year, we will be launching another Learning 2014. It will be taking uh, place at NIST in Bangkok, Thailand. Yeah. Those are the dates. There's the URL. It's not live yet. We're hoping to have registration live in about May 1st. So be looking for things, right? On top of that, this conference has become so popular and so recognized around the world that I was literally hijacked by a superintendent and some people who are sitting in the crowd, John, and said, we want this too. And so for the first time ever, we are taking Learning 2 on the road, and we're starting in Africa. Oh. Oh. All right? So, September 18th or 20th, if you're coming from the Nisa region or the Middle East and you want to be involved, we need your help. This is the first, to any of our knowledge, that there has been an educational technology a conference on the continent of Africa. This is an incredible opportunity for us and to continue to spread this message. And we're not done there. We've actually already bought the domain name, Learning to Mars. <laughs> and in 2020, we're gonna hold the first conference in space. All right? We're going to push, right? So here's it. Leave this conference being bothered. Be bothered about what we're doing with kids. Be bothered about what's happening in your school. And choose to take a shot. What could happen? Thanks. <laughs>